beyond the known path. In a world of ice, an ancient secret awaits. According to the grid, we need to head northeast. so quickly. This old map shows an uncharted passage. The GPS confirms a potential route through the polar grid. Just a few more degrees. We found it. The key is De Moivre's. how you can use polar coordinates to find the treasure. This problem has a really neat application of polar coordinates. Let's see how. Two non-horizontal, non-vertical lines in the xy coordinate plane. So let's draw our xy plane. Our y-axis, our x-axis. And it's just two lines. We don't really know much about these lines, but let's just draw something like this maybe, you know, just randomly. And let's say that. And they intersect they form a 45 degree angle. One line has a slope six times the other slope line. The other line slope. What is the greatest possible value of the product of the slope? Okay, so we've got slopes here, and that would remind you of the form of the equations y equals mx plus b. But then we've also got angles here. How do we mix these two? We've got lines. We generally deal with slopes and Cartesian coordinates, and we have angles. The best option is to use polar coordinates here. And actually what we're going to do here is we're going to shift this entire diagram to the origin. Why let this be some random intersection point like three comma five when we can just make it the origin? It's the same thing. The slopes aren't gonna change, the angle's not gonna change, but when we're imposing our coordinate system, it's so much easier to deal with them when they intersect at the origin. Okay, and let's say this line has a slope of x. This line slope of six x. So what we're gonna do here is to make this a polar coordinates problem, we're gonna draw a circle centered around the origin. So let's draw a circle like that. And rather than dealing with these entire lines, let's focus on these intersection points. So let's focus on this intersection point and this intersection point. Okay, so we know, well, how do we interpret these slope conditions with polar coordinates? We still haven't figured that out. So we know this is a unit circle. Why? Because we're just drawing the unit circle. We can draw whatever circle we want and we can pick the unit circle as opposed to like radius seven or whatever else. So this point over here, it's gonna have coordinates of, well, let's just say pretend, let's just say this tiny angle over here, let's call this angle theta. This angle is theta. Let's say this angle over here is theta. So because it's a unit circle, we would have that the coordinates of this point are going to be sine, cosine of theta, comma, sine of theta. And similarly, we, we would have that this, the coordinates of this point over here, that's going to be cosine of theta plus 45, comma, sine of theta plus 45. So now where do we get slopes from? Well, what is slope at the end of the, at the, end of the day? It's rise over run, right? So we look here, we have the y, y, the change in y over the change in x. For this bottom line over here, for this line over here, we have the slope is going to be sine of theta over 
cosine of theta. And this is just tan of theta. Similarly, for our other line over here, we have that the slope is going to be very similar. It's just going to be sine of theta plus 45 over cosine of theta plus 45. So that is just going to be equal to tangent of theta plus 45. And in fact, you might notice this pattern. It's actually really good to keep in mind here. Whenever we have this kind of line, and we know this angle, the slope is always just going to be the tangent of this angle. So that was kind of a neat way we kind of use polar coordinates to figure this property out. So now how do we use the fact that the slope is tangent theta versus tangent theta plus 45? Well, now we can just write an equation, right? We have tangent of theta plus 45 equals six times tangent of theta. And now we just use the tan summation formula. So this is tan A plus tan B. Tan 45 is just one, right? Because that's just sine of 45 over, over cosine 45 is one. Plus one over one minus tan A tan B. So that's tan theta times one, which is just tan theta. And we have this is equal to six tan theta. Okay, so now let's just expand everything out. Well, 6 tan theta minus 6 tangent squared theta. And now we'll just, let's just say tangent of theta is t because it's going to be annoying to write tangent, tangent, tangent again and again and again. So we have 6t squared minus 5t plus 1 equals 0. And this is just a quadratic. And there's actually a really neat trick to solving these kind of quadratics sometimes. So essentially what you can just do, you can just multiply, imagine when you take the 6 and you multiply by the 1. Now we get this different quadratic, t squared minus 5t plus 6. And you might recognize, okay, this is just going to have, this is just going to be factored as t minus 3 times t minus 2. So now there's a really cool way to, and this will have solutions of 3 comma 2, right? And we can actually figure out the solutions in terms of t for the previous equation. All you have to do is divide by 6. So we would get the solutions over here are 3 over 6, 1 half, and 2 over 6, 1 third. So that's a really cool trick you can use, which can save you a lot of time. If you have this kind of quadratic, multiply this over here. You'll get another quadratic. Solve the root for that, of that quadratic. Then divide it by the leading coefficient to get the roots of your larger, of your non-monic quadratic. So we have 1 half and 1 third are roots for tangent of theta. So we have tangent theta equals half and tangent of theta equals one third. Okay, so now product of the slopes of these lines. So essentially we're looking for, our value we're looking for is six x squared or we know x is just tangent of theta. So we're looking for six t squared. So if we're trying to maximize six t squared, we're just trying to maximize the magnitude of t essentially. So clearly over here, the maximum value is just six times half squared that's six times one fourth, that's three halves. But we actually have to be a little bit careful here because notice how we assume the top line would have a slope six times bigger. What if that's the, what if it's the opposite? What if this line instead had a slope six times bigger? And it turns out that in that case, we would be getting something very similar. It would be almost entirely symmetric because notice how we had here. And notice that you can think about it like we reflect it. It's, it's gonna be, we're gonna end up with this case here. We're going to end up with, let's see, this line, let's say this has a slope, and then this line. Notice that again, let's say this has a slope of negative 6x and let's say negative x, right? Notice that this is the same property is true, this slope is six times bigger, but this time we have that the line that has a, that has a slope that's six times less is 45 degrees clockwise. But it turns out in this case, we'll get the exact same result because it's asking for the product of the slope. You'll get like negative, you'll get like negative half and negative one third, which would give the same thing because we're squaring it. So that's like, if you notice the symmetry observation, that's where you can use a nice shortcut. And if you don't notice that observation, you can always just go to the calculations again, this time with let's say one over six instead of six. Okay, so that was a cool problem. Our final answer is three halves because in either case, whether we have the higher slope or the six times larger slope ahead or 
six times larger slope behind, we get either half and one third or negative one half and negative one third. And it turns out it doesn't matter because we're squaring it because it's six T squared. But this problem is also a really great application of polar coordinates. So we have this ginormous equation, z plus 6 to the 8 equals 81. And when I see 81, the first thing that comes to mind is this is 3 to the 4. And that's going to be really useful. So we have this center in the complex plane. So let's draw out our complex plane. Again, we have our imaginary axis and our real axis, or y and the x-axis. And they're connected in the complex plane to form a regular polygon. And this is a, if you remember from the Roots of Unity video, we have that because it's to the power of eight, we are going to have that it's going to form a regular octagon in the, in the complex plane. So the key thing here is that notice that z plus six, it's going to be centered about this point, negative six in the plane, negative six. So whatever it is, it's just going to be centered around negative six. Our, our entire polygon is going to be centered around this point. And it's going to be an octagon that's centered around negative six because it's to the eighth power. So just for simplicity's sake, dealing with negative six is very hard. This problem is functionally equivalent if we just make it z to the eight equals 81, because plus six is just shifting our diagram. It's not doing anything else, right? So transformation is shifting z six units right. So whatever polygon we would have here, we just imagine shifting that six units right. But we're only asked to find the least possible area. So the exact location of points is not important for our purposes. So now we get this nice simplification. We don't have to worry about negative six anymore. Okay, so now it's centered around the origin. Z to the eight equals 81. It's gonna be an octagon. What is the magnitude of Z first of all? Well, the trick here is you just see the magnitude of Z is just gonna be the eighth root of 81, which is these, since 81 is three to the four, it's just the square root of three. So the magnitude of z is just square root of 3, right? Because if the magnitude is square root of 3, then we take it to the 8th power, we will get a magnitude of 81. So square root of 3, we have an octagon. Magnitude square root of 3. So let's just draw out what our octagon would look like here. And since the magnitudes are square root of 3, we can imagine a circle. Let's imagine a circle of radius, zero, of radius square root of 3. So this circle will have a radius of square root 3, and we can imagine an octagon inscribed in it. So octagon, we will have all these eight points we can draw. These eight points will form an octagon, and the magnitude of each of these points is square root of three. And we're asked to find three of these points. So we're, we need to find three of these vertices in the least possible area of the triangle. Okay, so how, okay, which three points will form the smallest area? Well, as you might, as you might guess, it's just going to be the three closest points. The closer the points, the smaller the area. Because if you imagine, if you imagine, let's say, I don't know, let's say you pick like this point, this point, and then this point. The area is clearly much larger. Versus, or if you pick like this point, this point, and this point, the area is much larger. So uh, while I'm not going to rigorously prove it, you can get a sense that no matter where you change these points, the area is always going to be larger. So we're going to focus on just these three points. Okay. And okay, with these three points, how do we find the area of this? So we do know all these red segments have length square root of three. So square root three, square root three. So now it's actually, we can probably get rid of our circle here. Don't need the circle anymore. Cause now all we know is we know all these red lengths are square root three. And actually maybe we should keep it here. Cause so we know that the angles, the angle of the octagon is 135, interior angle of an octagon. And we also know that, notice here that this is, like imagine we look by symmetry. We have two, two out of eight parts, imagine of our arc. And we have, this is one part, two part, three part, four part, five part, six part, seven part, eight part, right? And 
These are two parts of that. So it's one eighth of the total arc. So the angle over here is going to be exactly 90 degrees. So square root three, square root three, 90 degrees. As you might guess, that's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So that would imply that this entire length over here, this pink length, is exactly square root of six. Square root of six. And we can erase these now too. Ha, oh, that's weird. <laughs> square root of six. And we know that these lengths are both going to be equal. Let's call them both x, x. And in order to solve for the area, the area is just going to be one half AB, so one half x squared sine 135, so that's sine 45 degrees. So all we have to do is solve for x essentially, and this is just going to be root two by four x squared. So let's just solve for x and we'll be done. And we can solve for x using the law of cosines. So we have x squared plus x squared minus two AB cosine 135. Cosine 135, that's just negative root two over two. So that's equal to square root of six squared six. And from here, we just cancel out these negatives. We get 2x squared times 2 plus square root of 2, because these will cancel, equals 6. So x squared equals 6 over 2 plus root 2. And notice the smart trick we use here. We don't actually have to find x because we only need x squared. So that was simplification to keep in mind. And now we just multiply our standard rationalization process. That becomes 2. This becomes 6 times two minus root two, and this simplifies to three times two minus root two, which is six minus three root two. So we have root two over four times six minus three root two. And we can simplify this further. We get three root two, three root two over two minus six, three halves, because here root two times two is two, so that's six over four, three halves. So then this is going to be our final answer. That is the area of our triangle over here. So that was like the trick here. We want to shift it by six units to the left because we don't really care about the six. We just make a simplification. Then we know that we find the magnitude of the complex number is square root of three. And now, and now with all that's left is look at the area, use some tricks, some basic tricks, law of cosines, half AB sine C, and we get an answer like that. Hope you enjoyed this video and hope you especially liked the intro of this video. Thanks for watching. Imagine it's this number right over here. That's, this is going to be six, or shoot, it should be negative six. Hello, let's solve this problem. Hello, today we're gonna to be solving our degree. Now let me show you, this is, this problem is a really neat, today we're gonna to be talking about polar coordinates. It's like such a crazy, what? and we know the angle between them is 45 degrees. Where's my straight line feature?